which uh, I felt that you should be taking a linear potential for which the solution. So, the equation which satisfies this is something like up to some scaling ok. So, this equation is what will give you the uh, solutions which are airy functions there are airy functions of two types a i and b i and uh, so there is something which I want you to do just as an exercise. So, this differential equation if suppose I write differential Schrodinger equation for this I can do a Fourier transform ok. So, I can do Fourier transform writing psi of x as phi of q you could do this and try to write the equation the Schrodinger equation as a equation in phi of q ok. So, have you done this in the last semester and that solution is workable you can work out the solution it is a first order equation for which you can find the solution. But if you want to get back this wave function then you have to do the transform to get your get your uh, wave function ok. And that inverse Fourier transform is uh, what will give you a solution which is the airy function ok. So, that is why it is an exact solution for the linear potentials ok. So, this is one thing which I thought I should. So, typically the way the airy solution so you redefine things so that this is written in this fashion and you have to put in that the airy solution which I write at z I need it to be 0 you know this actually that x was redefined when you do it it becomes like x minus x naught or something ok that I do not care this is the function I am plotting. So, this is my proportional to psi of x ok. So, what I have to say is if it is a ground state the way I can say it is an even function is that d psi g by d x at x equal to 0 ok. So, this is what is the symmetric requirement has to be 0 this will give me the x naught value ok and that x naught value is proportional to my energy that comes from this redefinitions ok and that was 0.08 something like proportional to 809 by g or something like this ok. I will leave it you to check but uh, this is the way the so, the wave function is symmetric numerically also and we can show that the peak will give you the wherever it becomes 0 that value will give you the extremum and that x naught will define for you the ground state energy ok. This is one I wanted to say other one is about the double harmonic oscillator. You have a harmonic oscillator here centered around let us say minus a, another harmonic oscillator centered around plus a ok. In between there is a ok. So, this point is what is going to be dependent on. So, let me call it as minus c and plus c. And this one will be the one which will tell you the peak if you take potential V of x to be if you take this if you go to x equal to 0 this peak will be a squared ok. 
So, we do not even need to worry about these parts. So, what I was trying to ask you that time is suppose I make this peak or a tending to infinity, then what happens? It is like this side will be a independent oscillator, that side will be an independent oscillator. The wave function, ground state wave function for this will be separate from this. So, you will have degenerate ground state. So, if A becomes very large, okay, much much greater than 1 if you want you can take. If it is very large, you see that two symmetric degenerate ground states. It is like two independent regions, they do not talk to each other. But when I, once I slowly start decreasing the A, then what happens? Then there is a possibility of tunneling, okay. There is a possibility of tunneling and you can start getting a single non-degenerate ground state. By our earlier argument. Ground state by variational principle, the ground state has to be non digit Initially, when it is infinite barrier, it appears like these two do not talk to each other. That is right. So, tunneling probability is 0. All these logical arguments goes through. Yes. But once you start making it come closer and closer, the tunneling probability gradually increases. But we cannot violate the fact that it is a single 1D system. So, the non-degenerate state has to become, the ground state which is non-degenerate is important. But to start with when A is very large, A is tending to infinity, you had two symmetric wave function. So, which means there were two nodes, okay. So, this is also another reason that when we change A from infinity to finite values, the number of nodes cannot decrease. Okay. I, I do not know whether there is a very neat way of proving it, but I will think about it. But what I am trying to say is that in this case, Initially, when A is infinity, you had a separate wave function like this, but when A becomes finite, so there is this kind of one peak and one peak, what I am trying to say is that this will be the allowed wave function even when I start decreasing, but now it will become non degenerate because of the tunnel. Either you can be on the left side, you cannot you cannot converse with the right side, but where your particle will be suddenly when I make A tending to infinity is not in your hands. Suppose you are trying to increase A to infinity, initially let us say the particle is somewhere in the two regions, so superpose. When I slightly make it infinity, it can either go to the left or it can go to the right, that is not in your hand. So, it is equally probable. So, I am just saying theoretically there are two possibilities of the ground states. Which one is, is there is no priority. If you can say my priority that it will be definitely in the left side, then it is non-degenerate. It is like I have a chalk, I just put it down. When I leave my hand, it is going to fall down. If I can predict that it is going to fall down only this way, then it is non-degenerate. But if I cannot predict which direction it will fall, like I leave it, falls in arbitrary direction. It makes a choice, but which choice it will make, I do not have any control. That is what I meant by 
there are so many possibilities of the ground state solution. You can either have a solution with wave function in this region or you can have the, there, is, there won't be any particle here and you can have a non-trivial probability on the other side. So there are two possibilities and in that sense it is called non degenerate solution. Already it is in a ground state. By doing that you cannot cost energy and make it go into an excited state. Anyway, these are things which you should also think about it, okay. So the same argument which I did here, you can also do it for a simple constant potential well loads. It is not quite degenerate, it is the system takes a choice of either being here or being there. So if I ask you what is the wave function for the system, I would say that it is some linear superposition. I have no control on the system that it has to be in the left side or it has to be on the right side. Okay. Yeah. Think about this and now today I am going to start with the WKB approximation. W is Wenzel. K is Kramers and B is Brillouin. So these people came up with a neat way of solving for systems as I said where it is a slowly varying potential. Okay. So the simple systems which you have already seen is a particle in a box where initially you put it to be 0, these two are infinity, right. The slight modification which one can do still have it to be infinity, some you know slowly increasing function or something for the potential, some function but it is very slowly increasing, okay. So I would like to solve a problem like this, the simplest function which you could take is probably you could take that there is a constant value here up to let us say a by 4 and then another constant value. So let me call it v naught, let me call it 2 v naught and then let me bring it to 0, something like this. These are simplest situations where they are constants but different steps and how do you go about solving these problems. Of course constant potentials you have done many times. It is not difficult, but the best thing will be to try and attribute it to a x dependent potential which is slowly varying, not rapidly varying, okay. So this is what is the kind of problems we would like to solve. Here of course you have a condition that k times a is some n pi condition, right. We have done this. So, and then you can put this to be kn and you get this energy to be h cross squared this is something which you all know. cross squared k squared is n pi by a squared 2m a squared okay suppose we are here we would like to write the psi of x what is this and we would also like to see whether there is some kind of a quantization condition similar to this okay. 
How did we get this quantization condition? Can you recall? You said that the wave function has to vanish both at x equal to 0 and x equal to a. Right? That is the way you fixed it. So, you would like to do this for such a simple problem. Okay, so that is the motivation of the WKB whether we could use and find the solutions. So, psi n here is some normalization which you can write root of 2 by a sin k n, right. This is what you did. We would like to write a similar thing here. We would like to see a similar quantization here and we are done. So, not only this problem, you can have other problems. You can make the finite potential to be the infinite potential to be finite, right, with certain energy of the particle coming in at x equal to 0 and then some potential here, some v of x which is greater than the energy of the particle and then at a it is moving, there are constant potentials. So, if you want you can put v equal to 0 in region 1, v equal to 0 in region 3 and v of x between x equal to 0 and x equal to a. Okay. So, this is where you will find that it has to cross the barrier and then come out of it. So, here it is oscillatory solution. Here it is oscillatory solution, it has to cross the barrier, but now V is not a constant some function of x at every point in this region, this function of x is greater than the energy of the particle, ok. So, E is V of x and we would like to solve and find what is the transmission probability. Yeah, e is less than, sorry, what am I right? E is less than V and here E is greater than V. Thank you. So, this is oscillatory. Here you will have exponential and this is oscillatory. You are all with me? You are all with me? And we are interested in finding what is the transition, transmission probability. And typically if you write the solution, you would have written a e power i k x in region 1 plus b e power i k x, then this one will be some c e power minus kappa x plus d e power plus kappa x and this one will be correct. And uh, if you take a very large you can approximate where the mod f, this will be the transmission which will be f e power i k x and you can try to determine this by you know as some kind of a proportionality of the decay piece ok. If you make a very large ok, so you can look at this decay piece. If the decay piece damps down, suppose you draw the wave function, the wave function is some kind of an oscillatory function here and here it is going to, if this A is very large, it will damp down, ok. It will not come out of this. If it comes out, then you will get some information about the transmission probability, ok. So, in some sense, this will be proportional to some e to the minus 2 gamma will come back to it, where gamma will have information about the width of this well, 
okay and it will also have information what energy what is this function and so okay so the problems which happens in similar situations are in your alpha b alpha decay okay so this is the gamma theory of alpha decay okay so what happens is that they have a uranium nucleus and alpha particles are emitted out of the nucleus initially it experiences a nuclear binding force short range and after that there is a repulsive force taking over once it crosses the nuclear radius the repulsive force takes over is that correct so what you can plot a similar diagram for this which can mimic something like this but not quite so where do i draw it? shall i draw it here so let me take this okay so initially till certain distance um, and it's spherically symmetric so let me use the radial coordinate r1 coordinate it is going to be some v0 okay so let e be the energy of the particle let's say energy of the alpha particle initially it is subjected to the nuclear binding force for short range after that after this r1 radius it becomes a repulsive force alpha particle will have two protons and two neutrons so it has two times e positive charge which is going to be repelled by the nuclear charge which is ze so that thing i can put it as let me put a big line and then you will have something like this okay so here also you can see that you can have a tunneling probability suppose the energy of the particle is coming let me put it here suppose the energy of the particle is here if it has sufficient energy so this is a function of r then it can tunnel out and you can get the tunneling probability okay so these are the experimentalists are looking at these tunneling probability once they know they can study what is the lifetime of the particle you know so some of these thing decay rate decay weight some of these thing the experimentalists like to talk about these terminologies whereas we talk about transition probabilities and here it is in general a function of a potential okay so these are the class of problems where your wkb can actually give you some handle so you can keep escalating i think there is a tunnel diode in which you can look at tunneling current the tunnel diode potential also has some similar function so you can go and explore some examples and see where the wkb method is really useful hmm? so now i'm going to do a formalism of substituting in the schrodinger equation that v of x is slowly increasing and our aim is to derive something for this quantization condition as a simplest model and then we could do this alpha beta uh, alpha decay problem which was gamos so this is the theme and the motivation Are you all happy shall we do some algebra now okay yeah so to start with as i said the first modification which we will do is to replace the amplitude as a function of x and the phase factor as a function of x this is what we will substitute okay so we we kind of put in so we take psi of x 
to be I am just following the notes because I do not want to mess up any factors, signs and so on ok. Otherwise I will keep erasing and we will use P of X ok. So, this is our notation. What is the next step? You substitute this in the Schrodinger equation and then equate real and imaginary ones, ok. So, substitute it in the Schrodinger equation, you will have doing a 1D problem when WKB is useful for this 1D problem as well as for spherically symmetric solving only the radial equation. Okay. So, in these two situations WKB is used. This you can rewrite it as So, substitute now for psi as I said that once I modulate my potential to become x dependent the slight modification which I can do is put amplitude to be x dependent and also a phase factor and we will see how s is related to p ok. Right now I am not putting s to be p we will see what exactly happens is that right. So, substitute it here and uh, substitute it in this equation this form. So, d squared psi by dx squared will have a double prime of x Yeah. What? No conditions are put in right now. Okay. So you are asking whether I am putting e to be uh, greater than. Okay. So let's take for simplicity right now. Let's look at e greater than v. But later on we will. We'll we'll use the general situations. Because you are worried that uh, some places when I compare the complex coefficients then if p squared is negative, but it is still p squared. Yeah, that I agree. I agree. So, right now I am taking p to be greater, but we will do it for Yeah, like for this the solution would have been e to the power of i p x at that specific point s prime squared plus p squared over h cross squared equal to 0. d squared psi by dx squared d psi by dx will be a prime times psi plus a times s prime times psi right. So, these two terms are taken care from here and then you will have a a prime s prime e to the i of s of x. So, let me not write the function forms it is understood s is a function of x a is a function of x by h cross then what else?
S double prime and then you will also have A S prime E S S prime squared, right? That's the definition. So then you do the next step A double prime A prime I by H cross S prime I S by H cross plus I by H cross A prime S prime I by H cross the whole squared A S prime squared sorry S prime squared is put what else one more term is there no that is it now what is the next step and we also have a plus p squared over h cross squared a times i s by h. Now I think it is perfect no. Now what do we have to do? You have to equate real and imaginary parts. So, which are the terms which are real? This one, this one, this one. So, let us write the real part A double prime. So, let us cancel the E I this part out can we do that ok. So, A double prime minus 1 over H cross squared A S prime squared plus P squared by H cross squared A equal to 0. Is that right? What is the second equation? Second equation will involve this term and this term make a mistake yeah so these two can be grouped one more term is there. so let us add those two and write the imaginary part imaginary part of the equation will be 2 a prime s prime over h cross plus i anyway I'll remove 1 over h cross a s double prime am I allowed to do this ok so there is 2 by h cross a prime s prime plus 1 by h cross a s double prime this can be simplified further. Can you simplify? A squared S prime the whole prime equal to 0. Correct? So, that will give you a 2 factor 2A times A prime and this will give you A squared times S double prime 1A you can cancel. So, you will get back this. Okay. Here I am going to write now I assume ad hoc that A double prime is very very small ok. 
is very very small that I can ignore. Another way of seeing is that if you treat it like a free particle, you can treat this A double prime to be really small. That is one way of arguing, but we will justify by doing a neat expansion. Okay. So, if you see here, I have kept the hedge cross. If you am saying I am going to look at a approximation which is semi classical, what is the value of hedge cross? It is almost tending to 0. So, these two terms will be dominated, right. If you are going to the classical limit, the 1 over h cross term is dominating over a term independent of h cross. That is another way of arguing. But right now, let us take this to be small and let us see whether we can get back our quantization condition for the particle in a box which is a special case and small fluctuating potential inside the box also. Okay. So, this is one way of justifying. So, if you take this to be small, then from here what we have to determine is what is S because A will cancel, right. A cancels. If you take this to be almost 0, then A cancels and what do we get? So, for A double prime very small, S prime equal to plus or minus p by h cross. Yeah, sorry. Thank you. Plus or minus p. Thank you. So, s prime is plus or minus p by, sorry, h cross is there. Already h cross is there, so I can cancel that also. So, s prime is going to be plus or minus p. p is a function of x. Okay, and what is p? p is root of 2m e minus v and I am assuming e to be greater than p. So, what is the solution now? And from here we can determine what is a. Let us determine a from here. What is a of x? a of x is up to some normalization divided by root of S prime and S prime is what? Plus or minus P. So, you could put it to be P of X and S prime is. So, now can we write the solution? can write it as some constant divided by square root of p, p is a function of x, p is root of 2 m e minus v and e to the power of the you know s prime, but I need to write s. How do I do that? Integral of p of x dx h cross, you can put the starting point but you have to go till the specific point which I want. Let us take goes from x to 0, x equal to 0 as the starting point, but if you have x as a minus infinity, then you should start from minus. Okay. So, that is the most general solution. Which side? Yeah. So, this plus or minus, thanks for pointing this out. The plus and minus sign has a special meaning, right. You have to put the plus and minus sign. Here I can put it to be a mod and take the phase factor in the, I can take the phase factor in the constant C in the normalization. That is up to me. So, that is not really important. But here this plus or minus sign is important. Plus for the or in, in going, minus for the reflected wave, all these things are important, just like the way you did for constant potential. I, I did not even fix what is this C, 
So I can try to make sure that the C which is combined with everything is not having any sign. Your question is if I put it to be plus or minus P, then the minus sign will give an I factor. I will put the C also to be I C or something so that that is C is complex if it is see what is argument is that if C is complex uh, A is complex here I am assuming A to be real I am comparing real parts and imaginary parts right. So in some sense the constant which I am going to put and the solution has to be real the total solution A has to be real. If I put this to be minus that negative sign they will force C to be complex such that C times that minus I will take care to be real, right. That is another way of arguing, right. So this whole thing should always be real. It can be traded off between this sign and this being complex in such a way that this combination is always real because it does not make sense to write a minus and put a I here because once I have argued it to be real, there is no point. So the sum total of whatever I said today. So the WKB approximation shows that there is a real amplitude which is inversely proportional to the magnitude of the momentum. I can call it momentum remembering my sort P subscript X it's P which is a function of X in 1D problems right P is E minus V of X times depending upon whether it is ingoing or outgoing you will have a plus or minus sign I by H cross if it is oscillatory solution right times integral P of X dx where this upper bound is X and the lower bound depends on your starting point depending on the problem we do, if I am doing the particle in a box from 0 to A, I would have put it from 0 to X as the most general solution for the specific problem. If I do some other problem of minus infinity to plus infinity, you have to be careful. So there is something which I want you to think, the amplitude of this wave is inversely proportional to the momentum square root of momentum it's roughly the momentum right what does that tell me in quantum mechanics mod psi squared will give you the probability of finding the particle between x and x plus dx if the particle is moving with rapid velocity or rapid momentum then the chances of it of trapping it at that point is low compared to a stationary particle. That is my classical notion, right. So, this is respecting that classical notion that it has to be the amplitude has to be inversely proportional to the momentum so that the probability of finding a particle is inversely proportional to the momentum, okay. So, this is one which is naturally appearing and now what we would like to solve is put it in a particle in a box, conventional box and how will I write the solution tell me now for the wave function psi of x. You can write this oscillatory or because my wave function has to vanish at infinity I can also write it as it or let me put it as a phase factor or S of x. If I put an S of x I have to put a by a h cross that is something which I have to remember. And then what do I have to do? 
use the fact that at x equal to 0 the wave function should vanish ok at s equal to 0 the wave function should vanish and you can try and put one of those coefficients to be 0. So, we will do this problem tomorrow and then we will also do the gamma theory of alpha decay and then we will continue with why my approximation a double prime is taken to be small is allowed. First let us verify whether we get a reasonable whether we are able to reproduce this problem then at least we are justified and then I have assumed a double prime to be small in doing this. How do I justify? I have given you one justification. It is a semi classical approximation where h cross tends to 0 is the reason, but we will do a h cross expansion and verify explicitly that this is what is happening a double prime can be set to 0 or what is the limit of validity for wq.